In this video, I want to introduce you to extensions in SketchUp. Um, for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to go over two extensions, 1001 Bit Tools and JHS PowerBar. Um, but know there are thousands of extensions for SketchUp. And if you're ever trying to do something with the default tools built into SketchUp and you think it's hard or difficult or you just can't do it, uh, there's probably an extension that you can find that will help you uh, model it easier. Um, just in general, if you wanted to install an extension, you can uh, access the extension warehouse, just like you access the 3D warehouse that's in SketchUp. And essentially inside this extension warehouse, uh, you'll have a catalog of every extension that was made for SketchUp. And you can sort this by categories, you can search it by developers, but typically I think I find most of the extensions I need uh, using YouTube and searching questions that I have, and it'll typically lead me to a specific extension that I can then search for, download and install. And you install extensions using your extension manager window. But like I said, for this video, um, I want to, I don't want to, make an hour long video about SketchUp extensions. So I decided to um, highlight two of the primary tools that I use. Each of these extensions have multiple tools built into them. And I think it's important to understand that uh, just because you're installing one extension doesn't necessarily mean you're installing one tool. Um, and I think you'll uh, understand that as this video goes on. So we'll start with the 1001 bit tools. Um, First, we'll go to our toolbars and turn on this extension. Obviously, you'll have to install this before you can use it. 1001 Bit Tools has like 20 tools built into it, and it's all um, extremely useful for uh, conceptual design and quick modeling. Uh, I'm only going to cover the ones that I feel like I use the most. So for starters, you have the fillet tool, which is exactly what you think it would be. You can select two edges, insert a radius, hit OK, and it's going to fill around those two edges. Once you perform this action, this line becomes just like any typical SketchUp line. You can do whatever you want to it. Next, there's the chamfer two edges tool, just like the fillet. It said it's a chamfer. You can enter in your numbers, hit OK, chamfer those two edges. And then you have the extend edge, which just says any other software, click one edge, click the second, it'll extend the line to that second edge. Next is the horizontal slice tool. If you select an object, then click the horizontal slice tool, choose where the level starts, enter a value, hit enter, and then it'll split that face or object at that level. Next, the linear array tool. Uh, we can select a component, choose the Create Array option. Then a dialog box comes up with all the options for our array. We can choose to evenly distribute them along a curve. Click Build Array. Down in the bottom left-hand corner, it'll tell you what to do. First, you have to choose the origin of the object. Then you choose Start and Finish of the array. Um, you can do the same with an area array. So click the area array dialog box. We can enter values for the spacing. Choose the origin of the component and then the area. The next tool is the uh, Create Openings tool. And this will allow you to cut a profile into any wall without actually having to model it. So here you can see I just have a simple uh, rectangle or a simple square. And as I click, it'll cut straight through this wall. And you can apply any profile you want um, for that shape. Next is the Grooves on Faces tool. Select your face, choose the Grooves on Faces. Dialog box comes up. You can enter all your values. Choose where the, where the grooves start. And you'll see it'll automatically build it into that face. You can also do this with multiple faces. So you can see you can create a really cool effect with very little effort. Next, we'll look at the stair builders. Um, you have single staircases. You can enter all of your values for your rise, your run, string or depth, um, the number of risers you have, the handrail offsets, 
Um, and once again, you're just using lines as guidelines and you click the start, click the finish and it'll automatically build it. And then there are a couple more options. You have uh, another simple stair, but it's it'll give you two flights and you can choose once again, number of risers, uh, stringer width, uh, slab thickness, et cetera. And um, you can see here, I had five risers for the bottom and 10 for the top. And then you can also do a metal or timber staircase. And this will just essentially model the same stair, but detail it a little bit differently. And remember, if any of this is too quick or too fast, you can always uh, slow down the video to half speed. The last stair option is a spiral stair, which is extremely useful. Um, once again, dialog box comes up, enter all your values, just hit build stair, click the center point, and it'll build it straight up from there. Next is an escalator tool. I haven't actually got to use this yet, but just like you think, works just like the stair options. You can enter values very simply, um, level to level, and then you just build it using a line as a guide. Next, we'll look at face to panels. Um, and essentially, this is going to allow you to uh, select the face and add mullions and glass uh, to this. With, along with a frame. So once you select the face, choose the tool, you can enter in all of your um, values, just like all the other tools, hit create, and you'll see it'll automatically generate that frame, the mullions, and the glass. And it'll separate it real nicely so you can get rid of the glass if you don't need it. Next, similar to that tool is the uh, face to perforated screen tool. And this is uh, like I said, close to the panel maker, but instead it'll allow you to uh, enter values for the way the cuts are actually made, whether it's the size, the angle, or even a custom profile if you wanted to add it. Next um, is the horizontal louvers tool. If you select the face, choose the horizontal louvers option. You can enter all your values build and it'll build all the louvers along that face. Here you can choose if you want it to be built on the front, the middle, or the back side of the face. And as you can see, it's dimensioned as we enter the values. Next are the vertical louvers and this works the exact same as a horizontal louver tool. Next tool is the rectangular grill tool. Here, if you select a series of lines, choose the create rectangular grill icon, enter your values, and it'll extrude a grill along those lines. And you can do the same with tubes. Uh, you can enter the diameter, hit OK, and it'll instantly build that grill. Next tool is the instant roof uh, tool. This just allows you to create hip gable roofs on um, faces. This is really good for uh, context modeling, especially for residential areas. Um, with this, you can create rafters, battens, purlins on that face. This doesn't have to be necessarily used for a residential house. It can be used on any face or any type of building. And then lastly, you can add joists um, to faces. Once again, this doesn't have to be used in the traditional sense. You can use it for any sort of beam placement, whether um, it's for a museum, or a concert hall. Um, here you can see you can also place them on flat surfaces and it allows you to determine uh, the direction that those uh, joists are flowing. So that's all the 1001 bit tools I wanted to share. Next, we'll look at JHS Power Bar. You'll do the same thing, go to Toolbars, open up JHS Power Bar. And once again, you'll have to download this before you can use it. The first tool is the Face Finder tool. I use this all the time. What it does is if you have a series of lines selected, you click on the face finder option and it'll create faces wherever they can be made. Next is the offset edge. Here, if you select an edge, you can offset that individual edge. You can click on it, enter a value, and it'll remember that value so you can offset an array of those edges. 
Next is the extrude line tool. This one is, I use this one a lot also. Simple, you just select the line, click in a direction, enter a value and do it. You can also extrude multiple lines at once. Next is the extrude path tool. This one allows you to extrude um, a rectangular surface along a path. You can do it along one line, multiple lines, um, and curved lines. And you can also choose the alignment, whether it's the center, the edge, or offset. Just like the extrude along path, there's also pipe along path. This will come up with parameters such as thickness of the pipe. And this will actually give you a surface that you can push and pull. Um, and once again, you can do this along one line, multiple lines, or curved lines. Um, and just like the pipe along path is aligns the tubes, the difference of this is it gives you a solid tube on the line. And um, a benefit to this is that you can select multiple lines at once and turn them all into tubes. So for instance, for making rails, um, it's a very quick and easy way. Next is the copy along path tool. This allows you to copy a component along the line. Um, to do this, you'll select or you'll You'll click on the copy along path icon, choose the line, and then the component. Without doing anything, now you can enter a value in your measurements box in the bottom right hand corner of SketchUp, and this will determine the spacing between each object. And once again, you can do this on a curved surface or multiple lines. Next are the line tools, and these are very straightforward and simple. They allow you to align objects along the X or the red, the green, or the blue axes. Next is the drop at intersection tool. Um, this allows you to select a series of components. Once you click the icon, it'll drop it at the nearest intersection. So you can see how this could be super useful for dropping trees on a sloped terrain. Next is the mirror tool. And this is probably one of the most used tools uh, because there isn't a, a built-in mirror option in SketchUp. And for this, you just have to choose three points um, to determine the axes that the object is mirrored along. Next is the Weld tool. Whenever you draw lines in SketchUp, they're not default as a polyline. So if you select all the lines, choose the Weld option, it'll glue all the lines together. This is useful for whenever you're making lines of pipes because if you don't glue them, the lines will be segmented. But if you weld them, if you weld them, then make it into a pipe, you'll see it'll be one continuous pipe. Next is the JS Mover tool. If you select an object, click the mover icon, you can then move that object using your arrow keys. This is super useful for moving things that don't necessarily have to be moved to exact positions. Next is the random scale slash rotate options. Just like it sounds, you select a series of objects and then you can scale and rotate them. Um, you can also choose both to scale and rotate them at the same time. Next is the Proxify Component Tool. Just as it may sound, if you select a component, select the tool, it'll Proxify it. This is useful for super heavy models. Once you Proxify it, you can copy it, unproxify it by clicking the icon again, and you'll see they all come back. Lastly, um, the C Points Tool. This is just a very um, high level example of how you can use it. But if you have a series of C points, you can select those C points and then use the component to C points option and it'll place that component along all of those C points. So this was just a very brief uh, rapid fire introduction to using uh, extensions in SketchUp. Um, I don't expect you to understand how to use these tools just from this video, but I hope this gave you um, some good insight on the power that um, some of these tools can have whenever you're modeling. Um, it can easily make you much more efficient. Uh, but if you saw anything specific within these two extensions in this video, just type it in on YouTube and you're going to find um, some very detailed videos to help you model better. Um, but I really hope this helped you guys out um, and thanks for watching.